Okay, perfect. Good morning. I'm Chari. I'm part also of the Future Learning. How are you? Good. How is it going in the academy? How was yesterday? <laughs> yesterday was nice, no? When you touch the machines, it's super, it's a good moment in the academy, I think. Um, I was instructor four years ago, for two years. And since three years ago, uh, I'm more part of the uh, European projects, trying to do research in, in the future learning and the skills that people need and how to develop these skills, okay? Um, I like coding, so I think that that's why the team put me today in the OpenSCAD, because I don't know if you know, but OpenSCAD, you create the 3D models, just coding, okay? Uh, who knows coding? Doesn't matter if, no? There's someone that doesn't know nothing about coding? Okay, it's good. I mean, it's not a problem to use OpenSCAD, in fact, it's a good tool to start learning coding because the, the coding is super basic and then you can copy and paste and try to understand how it works, the code, uh, and we will see now. And I think it's an opportunity to learn because in the, in the future, in the especially when you work in, in the interface uh, assignment, you will need to develop your own uh, apps and your own applications, but okay. um, OpenSCAD is a good, uh, opportunity to do this. OpenSCAD, it's super powerful if you want to create solid uh, 3D geometry. And if you want to create this geometry based on, on basic uh, transformations and using Booleans operators, okay? If you want to create super complex models, uh, I recommend you to go to Fusion or Rhino. But if you want to create like basic uh, uh, objects or geometry that you can create in that way, so using booleans like uh, uh, subtracting, adding, uh, moving, so this is the, a good a good software. Um, you, the other thing that is nice is that you can go to the online version. So you have the open SCAD that you can download and install in your computer. This is open source, so you can use in any of the system. But also there's the open SCAD. This one. That works online. And you can copy and paste the same code that you use in the in the desktop version, but in the online version. Okay. So in some way, in some day you don't have a computer, but you have access to the internet, you can use this. Okay, what else? It's nice because you have a um, super power uh, community around. So you will find many, many examples of how to use the OpenSCAD, sample of code, libraries. Okay, and this is, this is nice, it's super well documented. So it's a good opportunity. In that case, for example, in the gallery, you can find some models that people have developed. And, but if, if this is your, your first time, this is crazy, okay? If you want to develop this model for first time and you don't know nothing about coding, I think it's not the best tool, okay? But has good reference, what else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? about this. If you go to the, to the official webpage, you will find also some references. Um, the documentation that I'm gonna use today to follow the classes, the ones that you have in the, in the webpage. This one. Okay. What else, what else is important for OpenSCAD? Mm. It's more focused for 3D than 2D, but you can do 2D things, okay? It's fully parametric, so you can customize with the code and, and you can design like a, the base and the structure of your object, but then with parameters, you can adapt and change easily. Um, so for the assignment for this week is important too. And you can, you can do the assignment 
uh, for this week in one hour today. Okay. Um, in terms of the user interface, there's three parts. Uh, here, the, in, on the left part, we will find uh, the code part. Okay. You can use the editor that you have in the OpenSCAD, but if you are more familiar with other editors for code, you can use it and then uh, open it with OpenSCAD and that's all. And then you have the, in the right part, the, the 3D view, okay? And you can play with this. And then in the bottom on, on the right, the console, and the error log. And this is important because when you are doing code and you do a mistake, if you have an error, you will see there, okay? Mm, what else? About the units, okay. By default, OpenSCAD, the unit is, one unit is one millimeter. If you want to, to work in, in a different parameter, try to create a variable and then put the conversion between the, the millimeters and the other uh, uh, unit. And, and that's all, okay. What else is important to check? Mm. Ah, yes, super, super. And for me, it's the best reference. is the cheat sheet. Here you will find all the commands that you can use in the, in the OpenSCAD, but also how to use it. So if you click in any of the of the concepts, you will find examples of code, okay? And this is like super nice. For example, if we do this, we copy the circle, then we go, we create a new file. So we copy, and then we have create a circle, okay? So a 2D design. And it's easy to understand. So if you read the, the command, you understand that you need that the result of the com of this command is going to be a circle with a ten units uh, as a, a diameter. Okay. Once you put the code, the process is you debug the code, and then in the uh, view you will see the result. Okay. If you do a mistake, probably you will see. Look that you have an error, okay? And you, you will see a dot, a red dot on the left. Um, one uh, another important thing is that the code is executed from the top, from the first line to the, to the bottom, okay? So it's like a step line by line. Um, what else? And then when you have the design, and imagine that this is a 2D design, no? And you want to um, to render this and then export for laser cut. So there's a, in the top editor, there's a button that it's rendered. Then you have the 2D design, and now you can export to a DEXF file to laser cut. This is the process for everything, for the for the 3D and also for the 2D. Yes. What else? What else? Mm, let's go again for the cheat sheet. Mm, imagine that we you want to create the sphere. Okay, let's go to the sphere. That case is, as you can see, the resolution of the of the three D model is not super good. If you if you want to increase the resolution, then there's a parameter, and you see the percentage of resolution. Things like this. So if you increase. Okay. 
my recommendation is that don't use 100 percent because well it depends of the comp of your computer as much comp as much objects you have more needs you will need from your computer okay in the case that you want to 3d print this model it's the same you render this and then you can export to as an SDL file okay or you can use the three printer if you connect with the um, with CUDA the open SCAD, you can control all the parameters from here okay perfect any questions for now Ah, okay. I'm going to put uh, the link in the chat, okay? Is there online? So, for example, if you save the this file, the open SCAD file. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. here. Now let me yeah, you just need to Cura. Yeah, so you need to start. You have start. You need to have installed Cura or a Slicer or whatever you want. Okay. So at the end is a how to connect the software with the with the Cura or a Slice. Okay. Uh, so if you have the file and then you go to the online version. We drag and drop here. You have the steel. Okay. It's clear this part. In the online version, you have the menu in the left, then the viewport, and then there's like a window that where well, you can put the code. Okay. Yes. So, more or less, do you understand the workflow of the of the of the software? Okay. What else? Is something similar to CSS, like that, that different between, for example, this code and the variable. Yeah, it's it's JavaScript. Oh. Yeah, it's quite similar to JavaScript. Yeah. So, if you know JavaScript, you can use. Uh, 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 open SCAD like easily, especially the online version. What else? Let me check. And in that case, how can we create a variable? Easy. Like, imagine you put radio. Then I think if you put here radio, do what? No, wait a moment. Like this. Wait. So you get the put the name of the value, you put uh, the value of the value. You don't need to specify if it is a, a number or it's a character, because in some languages you, you need to put, for example, integer, the name of the variable and the value. And if you put a character, then you, you have a, an error in your comment, in your code. In that case, um, OpenSCAD understand the, the type of variable that you are creating, 
but you don't need to specify if this is a character, if this is a string, if this is a number, okay? Yes? Perfect. Questions from the online people? No? Okay, let's continue. Let me go. To add comments in the comments, like mm -hmm. email, CSS, and Yeah, yeah. It's, it's also in, in the in the documentation. So if you want to create comments to explain the code or part of the code, you just need to, to put two slash and you will see that the, this line, the color is different. Okay. okay. For the ones that doesn't know about coding, you can create comments because in the future, or if you want to share the, your file, your code, uh, another person can, can under, uh, could understand the code, okay? Okay, what else? Let's gonna do the example of the of the Lego piece. Wait, here in the online version, how, how do you uh, move the code? Ah, okay. No problem. So, so let's gonna create first a cube, okay, and then you save it. So you have a cube, and now it's uh, gonna save it with another name. And now, if you go to the online version, you can take the file yeah. and drag and drop in this space in the bottom left. You but leave it there. Edit, edit it directly on the online version? Yeah, yeah. And how can I, I, I'm using like the radio variable and I can, I don't see if this is applying to the like, I don't know if this is something that can be applied. You need to, to press the F5. Oh. Oh. Check it, if it works. Oh, I don't know. Ah, okay, I don't know, in Mac. In the left part of the online version, you will see some of the uh, short commands. Okay. Perfect. Oh, great. Hmm? Okay. Um, a lot of you are engineers and you also understand this, but if you want to design a piece, it's important to, to know which are the, at least which are the parts that you need to measure later. So in that case, this is the, a typical Lego piece. Um, so let's gonna create variables. We create like the width, the length, and the height of the of the cube. And uh, the variable that put center fails means that if you see the viewport, it's not in the center of the viewport. Okay, it's in, like in the corner. If you change and you put through, you will see now that. move to one corner, if you put center. You put here the center, okay? And parametric, what does it mean? Parametric means that if now I want to change the width of the, the width of the, uh, brick, you can just change one value and then render again, and now the brick is different. Okay, so you can create an object, create variables. So, in the future, if you want to adapt your design 
to something more specific, you just need to change. You don't need to redo all the all the objects. You just need to change the some variables. Okay, this is important because you can create a, a Lego brick like it, the small one, but you can create a big one. And the, the process to create the brick is going to be the same. The only thing that you're going to change are the the values of the brick. Okay, this is clear. <laughs> Comments, questions? Someone has a mistake, an error. Check the console. Uh, each, each of the lines at the end, when you, you are doing the, the open SCAD, at the end of each line, you need to put a dot comma. Okay. How good? There's a, a, a button in the interface part, in the viewport part. Let me check. So if you click, okay. Yes. Okay, you can also change the color of the object. Um, yeah. Have you seen that I, I, don't, I didn't put uh, the dot comma at the end of the color because the, I want that the color applies from this line until I have another, another object, okay? So if I create and it's here now. Okay. So you have the color red until you have a dot comma. Yeah. So if I want to change the color of the sphere, I need to put another one and then put green. And you can change. This is important if you are um, creating a, an object and you want to identify the different part of this object. It's, it's a, a good practice to change the color of the, of the object. What else? Okay. Okay. Now let's gonna create the the cylinders that you normally have in a in a Lego brick. Okay. I have it here. Okay. In this in this code, I just copy paste the, the code that we have in the in the documentation. Eh? You will see what is a loop. A loop is a you have a, a piece of code that you want to repeat a number of times. Okay, so that, in that case we use the for. Okay, so it means that I define a variable that I okay I need. Um, the diameter of the cylinder, okay. The diameter, the, the height of the cylinder, okay. And the number of files of rows that they want of cylinders, okay. So I put four. If in that case I create nine, you will see that we create nine files, nine, sorry, nine rows of cylinders. If I want to get four, four. Okay, and in which part of the code I reuse? So I use a for that is a loop, and inside this for, we have 
two steps, okay? The ones that create the row and the ones that duplicate uh, the, the column, okay? So in that case, we use a command that is called translate and translate means to move an object to one place, okay? It's clear this? Easy to understand for the ones that doesn't know code, the for, it meets a, a, a loop. Is this part of the code we are going to repeat from zero until four less one, so until three, four times, zero, one, two, three. You can change and say, okay, it's going to start for, from one. And then you will have one more, one line less, okay? Yes? Uh, if you don't see the piece, you need to render it. So press F5 or press the render piece. It's in the top. Problem is our error. Okay. So I'm going to put in the chat the, the piece of code that is missing. Is this one? Clear? What else would us? Ah, let's gonna use this Spanish booleans. So operations that you can do in the in the open scar. If you go again to the cheat sheet. You will see that there are three different Boolean operations. So you can do union. It means that you have two objects and then when you connect this object, you generate one object, one new object that is the combination of the two, the difference and the intersection. Okay. So for example, if you want to go a union of this, It's going to be a new file. So you create union, and then inside you put the two objects that you want to create this union. Okay, in that case, I put a cylinder, two cylinders, sorry. Okay. You see, so I create a cylinder, then I rotate 90 degrees, I create another cylinder, okay? If I don't rotate, you will see that it's the same. So you're creating an object from the same cylinder. And this is a one object. So if I export this file, I, I will have just one model, no two cylinders, no two models, just one model. Okay. Yes. What else? In case you want to do intersections, for example, the same. Okay. 
if you want to comment before the online, you need to create like a slash, then the start and close with a start and a slash. Okay. So I, now I comment this code, this part of code. So at the end, I will not have nothing. In the intersection part, I want to create a theory. Okay. And then I will create. Rotate another cylinder. You mean like uh, have a, a file for variables? No, something like that. Like you said, what you find is actually a call. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Uh, I mean, the, the best, no, if you want to create, if you want to go fast in OpenSCAD, the best thing is try to find like models that another people has developed previously, that are files. Uh, when you are creating code and you think that you are going to reuse this code in the future, save it as a file, and then in a new in a new project, yeah, like a library, the, the same use of libraries, mm -hmm. so it's the same in OpenSCAD. So at the end, when you design something in OpenSCAD, the first thing you need to think is, okay, let's go try to find someone that has done something similar and then copy and paste and then adapt this with the parameters, okay? Or do a combination of different files from people. It's the good thing of OpenSCAD that you don't need to create since, since nothing. You, you, you can reuse everything from the community. Right. Yeah, and this is a good concept. So don't start like, doing complex objects if someone has already done it. So try to copy and paste and then adapt for your own. Mm -hmm. So now, for example, in that case, I have two objects, two cylinders, okay? If I export this file, I will have two objects. But if I do an intersection of this, <laughs> then the result of this intersection is is one object, okay? Have you seen how it has worked this? So union is the union of two intersections. The result of the object is just the, the parts that are connected. Yeah? Tell me, tell me. Ask. No, it's the height and then the radius. Right? Ah. What's your name? Sorry, what's your name? Mark. Mark has put this instead of a dollar in the resolution. He puts less. And, yes, and then you have the, the result if the is the low resolution. Okay. So try to use dollar and then increase the resolution to something that like is quite nice. Okay. Because 
it's not rotating. Mm -hmm. Let me check. So if I rotate, just to try to reproduce your, if I move in that way. Yeah, it's more or less. It's working in my case. I don't know. Okay, let me speak to you because there. Uh, Is this one? Yeah, I use something like this. I don't know what's happening. People are using something like this. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. No, no, it's okay. So important now we know how to create. Um, Primitives, so basic three objects and basic to the objects. Also, how to rotate, move. Uh, we also use the booleans. Also, some loops. So, more or less, we have everything under control now. Okay. What else? Let's continue with the brick. The Lego brick. So now in that case, for example, I have one object that has different parts, the red one and the yellow one. Okay, but at the end it's just one 3D object. And I use the union boolean, but also a loop. So I don't need to create eight times cylinders, eight lines. So I just with one line, I can create, I can copy and, and clone the, the cylinders of the Lego brick, yeah. What else? Now, if I change this, um, so I can create my own Lego bricks, just changing the variables. This is how it's powerful. Okay. Perfect. What else? Okay, important this. So we have now how to create a, a Lego brick, more or less. We have all this piece of code. And now imagine that you want to use this Lego brick in other projects. So let's gonna create a module. A module is like a, a a model is the concept of model. How to reuse the co this code in Twitter projects? So let's go and create a model, and you create like a it's like a function for the ones that already know a code, and you put model the name of the model, and then inside. This is how to create a, a Lego piece, okay? And then a Lego brick, sorry, and then how I use this model? Just calling the name of the model. Yes? Like in, when you call the parameters, when you call, ah, no, no, no. In, in, yeah, yeah, in that case, I have it in the same file, but if you want to, to include it in the, in, the, in the model, you need to create here the name of the, inside the model, like in the other codes, uh, you, put, you want to put to, to send the uh, width. So let's want to put width and Lego, and then the, uh, the name Lego. And then when you call this model, you need to include send values. Okay. 
Now if I change, imagine I remove this part. Okay, I comment. Now it's not gonna work. Okay. I have an error because I don't I don't have these variables, but I can put the value when I call the model. It can tell you okay, this is the, the width and this is the length. name of the variables, okay? Okay. Yes? Have you seen this? So now, if in the future I want to create another Lego brick, I don't need to copy and paste this again. I can create a new one. Okay? And then translate. Translate in X like I don't know. 50, 0, 6, 12. Sorry, it's like this. I forget to put this. Clear how to use a model. So with this piece of code, I can reuse in the future in future pro in future projects. So in fact, I can save this file and then in another file call the Lego brick, and then I can reuse it. It's an library. Or or you you can specify the the, the route. You can specify the path for the for the doesn't mean that you need to have the, the two files in the same folder, but we need to specify in which uh, part of your, of your folder or of your uh, computer is the file. Okay. On the line where you call the module or something like import? No, import. Yeah, I'm going to use example. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You need to use use. Okay. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to save this. Okay. I'm going to save like Lego brick. And then I'm going to import the Lego brick. Second. Uh, did you save the second file too? Did you save? The, uh, save it. Try to save it because if not, uh, the OpenSCAD doesn't understand. So have you seen that I create a Lego brick code 
and I save it as a file, as a module, and then in another file, I reuse this part of code that embedding and using the use Lego brick stuff, okay? Ah, the color, yeah. So you put the command color before the object that you want to change okay. and without a semicolon. So for now, we have seen how to use variables, how to parameterize your object, how to create modules, how to create Boolean operations, and what else? How to create loops, how to translate um, commands. Yeah. I never try, I never try, but I think that you can do it. Because what I try is use Python with OpenSCAD. Okay. I think it, it's going to work because um, at the end of it are text files yeah. that you can connect. Okay. okay. So what I did is try to um, have an OpenSCAD file and then with a Python code generate this OpenSCAD file. Yeah. The Python, yeah. Yeah, that's this part is powerful. Yeah. I think it, it's something that is nice for the to use the combination of other languages like Python with OpenSCAD to create imagine imagine that you get an interface uh, that the user by by what with this interface can customize without any knowledge about uh, 3D model. You can put like the variables in a Python interface. And then you can use it, you can change it, and generate automatically the 3D model. Okay. Um, one more thing before I finish is that uh, you can follow here. Okay. What else? What else? Ah, for this week, in the documentation, I create a file that I call Living Hinge. That is going to be useful for you if you want to test the, the laser tag and test the, how the materials can be flexible with food and how to use it in the open scan. You have the file here and it's as easy like copy this. And then paste and you have. Okay. And then once you have it, you can render, and then you can export to to a DX, DX file and laser cut it. And then you can do tests, and then see ah, is, this is not working. So you just need to change these variables. Or if it's too much, or like the house. Or the dimension, the length. Okay. It's clear. At least, did you understand the process? How to follow? Where to find documentation? It's in the in our documentation. There's some links. Uh, the basic concept. And I think that maybe not for this week that is more focused on 2D, on but for the next week that is more for like this publication, you can do a quick test in the open start mm -hmm. and finish the assignment easily and then go deep in the content that you want to, to explore. Yeah. Questions? For the online people, there's questions? you there? No? 
Kurt, do you have questions? <laughs> no, no. Uh, yes. Um, sorry, uh, my camera. Hi. Um, hey, in FreeCAD, uh, there is uh, an option uh, names is uh, OpenSCAD. It is the same uh, form of uh, build the the solids or, or any? I, I never tried, but probably yes. I mean, it, it's an option, you know, in FreeCAD that you can create your models by coding. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, but 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 it's um, I don't uh, I think it's is different the um, the interface or yeah probably because I, yeah the interface is embedded in the inter in the FreeCAD interface. Mm. Ah, okay, so, okay. But at the end, the concept is the same. Eh? Is to um, you have a text file with the code, and then mm -hmm. you can create generate models from this part from this file. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. okay, okay, thank you. The open SCAD files are text code, so you can open with the text editor and change it. Okay, and then again for the future, if you are going to use Python, you can generate or JavaScript or whatever, you can generate your own files dynamically. I don't remember now, but two years ago, there was a student that did almost all the assignments just with code without using any <laughs> CD interface. Okay, of course it's not. Okay, okay, thank you. Has, has not the same uh, freedom that you have with the fusion, but it's a challenge if you want to follow. There's someone that is using the Raspberry Pi, no? Is working the, the online version? No. No. Ah. Okay. But if you try with the online version, of it works? Tell me. I have a Okay. Because which version are you using from the Pi? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that the port with the version four could work because the... <laughs> we have here, eh? so. Okay, so, you want to try? Push, okay. <laughs> okay. What else? More questions? Something? So, perfect. I think that Joseph is going to come now to do the uh, fusion part. But of course, if you have questions or something, just tell me. Okay. 